Hello, my dear friends. How is it going? I'm Ari Thurger, and today I'm here to answer one of the most recent questions I got from my patrons concerning the Viking Age Old Norse Society. Was there gender equality in the Viking Age? This goes in line, yeah, a little bit in line with the previous video if the Old Norse were egalitarian or lived in an egalitarian society. If you have watched that video, you already know the answer to today's video. Still, it's important to talk about such subjects for the reasons previously presented on that other video and to have a better perception of past societies and the biases of modern history. Well now, it is very common to find texts on several websites and media outlets that allude to total gender equality in the Viking Age within the Old Norse society. Over the years, I have come across several people talking, for example, about the role of women in Hellenic and Roman societies, and often this type of information is not true or not accurate. Although women in ancient Norse society during the Viking Age had a little more freedom and some social and economic privileges, as well as some autonomy and rights compared to the previously mentioned societies, still, the historical reality is a little far from what has been demonstrated or portrayed in relation to this issue of gender equality. But, after all, that's what this video is all about. Did women have the same rights and social status as men in the Viking Age? To what extent can we say that Old Norse women anticipated modern Scandinavian women in terms of rights, privileges and gender equality? The 19th century consolidated the figure of the Viking as a masculine pagan hero, while the female figure would be much more powerful than her equivalent on the Christian continent. But the favorites of the visual arts and contemporary literature were the warrior women, the maidens of the shield, shield maidens, and the Valkyries, who, in addition to embodying the prototype of the ideal woman, were also symbols of the nations themselves, such as Germany and the Scandinavian countries in the 19th century. A considerable amount of knowledge we have from Scandinavian societies of the past, particularly of the late Iron Age and early Middle Ages as well, was a fabrication of 19th century political agendas, which was further enhanced through art. Now, as said before on other videos, the term Viking was adopted in Denmark after the 1870s in an ethnic sense. That is, it began to be applied to the entire society. And in this case, the concept of Viking woman was also adopted. As pointed out previously, the term Viking did not originate as a term to identify a people, much less an ethnic group. In other words, Viking is not equivalent to race or any sort, both past and present conceptions and perspectives on the theme of race. It was in the 19th century Denmark that it began to wrongly being used to designate an ethnic group. Thus, Viking woman is a 19th century construction as well. Even in current academic research, we still see the strong influence of representations that were created in nationalist romanticism. Gender equality is one of of the main ideological foundations of the Scandinavian world to this day, even motivating much research. Namely, that the Viking woman was strong, independent, powerful and equal to men. On the website of the National Museum of Denmark, there is the following text, and I quote, if you please. The written sources portray Viking women as independent and possessing rights. Compared to women elsewhere in the same period, Viking women had more freedom. However, there were limits to this. Even if women had a relatively strong position, they were officially inferior to men. They could not appear in court or receive a share of the man's inheritance. 
it was the man who had the political power. Here, we can see two major errors. The continued use of the concept of Viking woman and the Icelandic sagas as historical documents, especially in the representation of female characters as independent, a clear stereotype. Don't get me wrong, the website of the National Museum of Denmark is a good and reliable source, just not at some points due to the continued use of 19th century conceptions and mistakes being perpetuated by academia to this day. Despite this, the text calls for a relativization of the concept of gender equality, especially when compared to our time. In common sense and publications of popularization, the first problem is generalizations. Studying a society is not a simple task. It has many variations from the point of view of hierarchies and divisions in addition to its modifications over time. Generalizing is always easier, as we can see in the simplistic patterns in some manuals. Thus, when we talk about Viking woman, we are creating a category as broad as medieval woman. But in this sense, it is important to ask some questions when we are about to study gender and gender roles in a society. We must take into consideration the following questions. What is the social profile? What time? What religion? So are comparative standards the same way? For example, when comparing the Viking woman with the medieval Christian woman, we create an even more superficial and incomplete generalization. This is the major problem when generalizing a gender within a group and generalizing a group and turning it into a stereotype. We are not taking into consideration the fact that there were several social status within the same culture, therefore, therefore quite a lot of differences for each person of each social strata. And the Old Norse society, particularly of the late Iron Age, the Viking Age, was highly stratified with wide inequality between poor and rich, between a coercive aristocracy and various relationships of servitude and slavery. And there is the question of time period. It's not just that the Viking Age was little less than 300 years, but within those 300 years, there were many differences and changes in culture, perception, political and economic issues, and other social aspects, which further influences the lives of many people, particularly of societies that are highly hierarchical in their structure. And of course, uh, there's the question of religion, belief systems, which also further influences how persons are viewed, how they are treated, and further influences political and economic factors that promote inequality among social groups and between genders. Today, we have a somewhat satisfactory picture of the life and general social role of women in the Viking Age, but it always requires caution in its generalizations. The basic pattern of this society was the predominance of patriarchy, with varying forms of subversion and independence, especially for wealthy and influential women. We can also consider that there were indeed women who had good nutrition and excellent living conditions, through bone analysis, of course. In some cases, archaeological remains have also indicated low levels of violence on peripheral farms in the Scandinavian and Baltic world. However, the visibility and social space of women in the rural world was different from those in cities. But, on the other hand, some regions in certain periods also showed a large number of female infanticides, indicating a clear gender inequality in raising children. We have evidences that girls and women received less food than boys and men in the Viking Age society on several geographical regions and in several social groups. Another issue forgotten in and by popularization works, slave women born in Scandinavia, who obviously did not have an easy life. 
women descendants of enslaved people born into slavery within Scandinavia, born in Scandinavia. Can't they be considered Nordic as well? Or is this something that can only be defined for free people? Because the few cases of studies uh, on Viking Age Old Norse women are always of influential and powerful women, mainly from Icelandic sagas, and many other women are completely forgotten. And when comparing, always in terms of ancestry, the Viking woman with current Scandinavian women, it is obviously not taken into account that current Scandinavia is not a slave-owning geographical reality, uh, in addition to other differences, of course. And uh, we also left aside the poor peasant woman, or the poor peasant women in general, whose evidence was not always preserved by medieval written and runic sources, but can be found in some archaeological records, which are often discarded, unfortunately. Many times, this generalization of Viking women has the tendency to also show them as superior in life and society compared to other women of the same period in other realities, other cultures, other societies. Mainly, a, a, another wrong generalization, which is comparing them to Christian women or and Muslim women. Not only, we already know that, Viking women is incorrect, not only because the term Viking was never to designate a people or an ethnic group and was in fact a term to designate an occupation which of which mostly men were more inclined to that occupation than women, and because we are putting all women into the same bag when we already know that there were considerable differences between many women, depending on religion, religion <laughs> social position, economic power, occupation, geographical area, and so on and so forth, but also comparing them to Christian women and or Muslim women is the same wrong generalization that leads to several misconceptions because Christian and Muslim women at the time also were not equal to one another depending very much on where they lived, which society, social status, their social status, their occupation, and so on and so forth. It just creates an illusionary perception of these societies when we compare between generalized conceptions and stereotypes. So every time we establish some type of comparison, we have to think about singularities, specifications, variations. Not, not even academics are unanimous when comparing the role of Nordic women after Christianization. Some think that their lives improved compared to pagan times, others not so much. Here perhaps it is the question of understanding what was compared and in what way. In any case, perhaps the topic is um, controversial and, and, and new discoveries, new investigations, and above all, new methodological positions must be taken into account. I mean, the study of Old Norse women in the Viking Age is a fascinating topic, but one fraught with conceptual pitfalls and especially idealizations and dangerous, very dangerous stereotypes. Now, the other problem we have, and uh, it is being perpetuated, is speaking about Old Norse women solely from what the Icelandic sagas tell us about them. It, it, it's not just the fact that women in the Icelandic medieval sources are a smaller percentage, but it is the, the content of the sagas themselves. We are talking about cultural biases. Women are rarely included in history, especially in patriarchal societies that write history. Icelandic sagas were no exception. In fact, the few mentions of women in those sagas, one way or another, always point out that they eventually succumbed to a man. Even the very few tales about strong Viking women, in this sense the term Viking very much applied to warrior and pirate women, at the end of the tale they end up being 
reduced to a life of marriage and servitude to some powerful man, and um, their Viking days are over. And, th and that's also another problem, because the few mentions of women in the Icelandic sagas are of powerful, important, influential women and in prominent positions. And again, it's the same problem of generalization, because these few women on very specific societal and economic positions are not the reflection of every woman in these societies in periods on, on so many other societal and economic and even geographical positions of Old Norse and Icelandic societies of the Middle Ages, late Iron Age and Middle Ages. Not to mention that Icelandic and Old Norse histories, laws, sagas, poetry and myths containing mentions of women and other female persons are manuscripts containing texts that were written in the 1200s about women who lived 200, 400 years earlier. Separating fact from fiction in these written texts is very much a matter of interpretation. The very sources on Old Norse women were not even written in the period they actually existed. One of the best ways to gather more concrete and, more or less to a certain extent, unbiased information on women of the past is through archaeology. But even archaeology has its limitations. Aside from the mod modern cultural biases, because women in history are often not studied still today, as we, are, we have been dragging a lot of cultural and gender biases from the past into our modern societies. But aside from that, some of archaeological finds were discovered over a hundred years ago and analyzed using a variety of techniques, and it took some time before archaeology actually gained its own methodology and became an actual field on human and social sciences, because for a long time, a very long time, it was an amateur work. And it's not just the clear biases, but also the lack of a methodology and techniques that were not the best in the past. And of course, even with today's advancements and achievements in techniques and, and, in, and in science in general, an object is an object. And both the object as well as the archaeological site itself requires quite a lot of interpretation. We simply don't know what a certain object meant for the people and for the person of that society. There are several graves that have no one in there, no human osteological remains. And we must rely on the objects alone, which it has been proven several times that we have failed quite a lot in interpretations of objects due to our own biased and modern perceptions on gender and the way we attribute objects to gender. It's like the old case of toy cars are for boys and dolls are for girls. This simplistic and wrong perception on gender has been very much transmitted to the objects we find in archaeological contexts. We simply attribute an object to a specific gender. And then this is why there are those famous cases of a grave having been interpreted as being a man for over a hundred years since it was found, based solely on the warrior paraphernalia, and after technological advancements we are able to analyze the human remains and come to the conclusion it has always been a warrior woman after all, all along. So, the study on Old Norse women and any women in history, is full of cultural biases and stereotypes. For instance, usually people have the tendency to say that Viking Age women controlled the household economy, were responsible for making clothes, basically held the power within the domestic and private environment. Housewives. This is a stereotype. There were many different realities for many women, and many differences from one woman to another even within the same roof they shared. Late 19th century Danish and Swedish societies created the myth of the Viking housewife, as well as the myth that Viking women were strikingly equal to Viking men. This is a Victorian version of Viking Age history, presented as the truth in several historical manuals and other literary works. Now, 
imagine how indeed these societies may have actually looked like if, if we abandon cultural biases, stereotypes, and highly important, we forget about 99% of what was written in the Victorian period about past historical times. Because much of what was written was a reflection of the Victorian society and its morals and values thrown back into past societies to express the ideals of a modern European society growing towards a very specific political nationalist identity. Gender perceptions has a huge impact on the ways we interpret history. This is a big problem and I think this had to be said because the same mistakes are done in other studies of other cultures and other societies. My dear friends, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video and, I, and may this video be of any use to you <laughs> and see you on the next video. As always, back for it now. Thanks for today. Obrigado por hoje. Until we meet again, my dear friends.